Greetings. In the name of the Most High, a day, <clears throat> day two of this progression that we find ourselves in. Um, never to be one without hope. Uh, Jeremiah 4 says, If thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me, and if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my, out of my sight, then thou shalt not remove. Um, then shall, shalt thou not remove. I'm sorry, that's the, in other words, I won't remove, remove you if you take away these abominations. And if thou shalt swear, the Lord liveth in truth and judgment and in righteousness, and the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him they shall have glory. For thus saith the Lord of men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. In other words, chapter 4, return to me and I will return to you, and I will not remove you out of my sight. In other words, the nation shall bless themselves in him, and in him they shall glory. So, a letter to the nations, to the people of the nations, that is the requirement. In other words, if you can put the abominations out of the Lord's sight and call for a national time of fasting and prayer or something like that as a nation, which since, well, America's in the aftermath, but I, I suppose this, could that have happened? Not just a fake national day of prayer, but an actual serious repentance. If that would have happened, see, that's not going to happen. America has fallen. I know people don't really understand that because they're still going to the market, you know, and, you know, apparently they don't understand the seriousness of Barack Hussein Obama in as a prophetic Rima regarding him. Apparently, you know, there's a couple of schools of thought. One, and I'm, and I, for me, it's just all to get you to think and focus on the Lord. I mean, that's the main purpose of this, unlike so many other places I've heard things. Seems the, the focus is on people. Uh, 2011, someone pointed out to me that I had done a similar audio called Antichrist X, uh, question mark back in 2011 regarding this very thing. And and I told you I had done that, and then I'm then I came back around. I didn't know when I had done it, but it was in 2011. If you look through those archives or search, you, it's called Antichrist question mark. And here we are again. The point is that obviously you can't have this discussion because Christians lost their faith, and the Christian religion is dead. So. We have to deal with all this mopping up today. And I hate to do it, but let's just go through the truth. Number one, Christianity in America is definitely dead. Globally, it's dead as well, save for the underground churches. Here, there are the strongest ones being in places where there's persecution in the Islamic countries and in China, etc. Um, And it, the, the reason why I say it's dead is because people do not have faith. Their faith has not been tested. I mean, they might have some personal events where they pray or whatever, but, you know, it's, when, I, when I say tested, I mean tested in a time of extreme battle. Tested at a time of, you know, um, the backdrop of nuclear war. Tested at a time of... Uh, a great horror upon the land. Tested, a, 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 you know, things that have not come into view just yet. Haven't really been tested. Will be tested. But trial this time is in judgment and it won't be exactly a test. More like it will be an extermination uh, from the natural world 
et cetera. And I don't think, oh God, I'm just, you know, some things I shouldn't even look at to see the state of Christianity. So the Christians, let me get this straight. They're not going to look at the, 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 anything of prophecy because there's a lot of end time delusion and charlatanism and chicanery going on and, and, and also end time programming. And so there's this idea of the end time delusion, which is an article I just, I just read in the middle of the night. And uh, I suppose the reason I read it is because it's cautioning you about not looking at um, prophecy regarding people or return of Jesus or end of time. We're going to deal with the end of time because these people have no clue what they're dealing with. They don't even, they, they just don't like it when you focus on that. So they say, Jesus taught the kingdom is within you. And so that should be it, just like they did, you know, that a combination of that and Romans 13, and you're basically the church backing Adolf Hitler or the church of the new age. One of the, one of the hallmarks of the Old Testament, I think you would agree, is, um, and from Genesis on, really, is prophesying the time of the end. In other words, there was, time was meted out. And there'd be so much time meted out until the time of the end. Uh, the, 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 the whole um, story really revolves around extinguishing the curse, you know, getting the promised land of Zion, which basically is obviously the earth at peace, having a new form of government, especially in the book of Isaiah, predicting the coming of the Lord, and, and also the permanent aspects of the Lord, the Lord's kingdom. Daniel is the forever kingdom that comes to replace this kingdom of Satan, and, and basically it, uh, it reigns forevermore. In other words, it will not be revisited again, this evil, supposedly. Um, and, you know, I would grant that people, of course, upon death could have this idea that they could just go into the spiritual realm and be in the kingdom. And that, you know, I've also taught that the kingdom of heaven is within you, Luke 17, 21. We've, we've gone through that. And we've gone through that as a kind of remedy. But let me, let me explain to you where that falls short and why people lose their faith. Uh, the kingdom is within you. Everything is everything. It's all cool, brother. It's no need to look at any of these end times, you know, just get through, We've got Jesus inside, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is our little thing. Okay. It's not enough because there's a cognitive dissonance that takes place, a psychological term, meaning there's, there's you know, a, a disconnect from reality. And what that is, is that God cannot, the, the, the half of the walk is, you know, praying for God to put an end to the evil on the earth, which is on any given day, to me, when you pull the veil back, it's 80% because of the amount of people that sold out to Satan who will appear as angels of light doing good works, but they're really evil and they're really liars and murderers. So, so 80% to 90% evil, at, out of equilibrium, out of balance with nature, out of balance completely. And they feel it. I mean, with me, I can see it. And unfortunately, I saw a lot of it, you know, at a very early age, and then it never changed. You know, it's like the people were all fake back then when I was a kid, and um, they remain, you know, they continue to be fake, and that includes, you know, doctors, lawyers, teachers, bakery guy, you know, the, uh, you know, like everyone has sold their soul to Satan and having this little uh, community going on, and uh, then they show up in church, which obviously means they have no faith. That's why I laugh. They say the Christian church, Christianity is dead. Done, done, done. Jesus is dead. He's as uncool as the Republican Party. He, Jesus will be legislated illegal pretty soon. Or the, you know, there'll be probably some false flag terror attacks from Christian right wing groups. So they'll call them, you know, racist groups or whatever it is, whatever that thing is they try to paint. But I mean, it's dead. In other words, it's like in China, George Bush went to 
uh, the official church open every day and said he was going to church to show people how there were churches there and they were cool with the state and all that. And that's not the church. The church is being persecuted. You try to put a Bible study in your house and if they find out about it, you'll be put out. You'll be persecuted. Okay, so... So this is all a part of it. I mean, this is a really um, uh, important thing to note. The only thing of Christianity left on the planet is, you know, you have architecture from, say, Christian times or empires, but certainly the United States is no Christian nation. And uh, my proof is just go to, go to the Capitol and look at it. You know, if you can stand it, look at it, if you know what it means. And once you decode, uh, de- decode the... Uh, the architecture and the, uh, the art, um, then you understand it's, it's really, um, gosh, it's really too bad, isn't it? You know, it really is too bad that, um, you know, basically it was a delusion. You know, there were some good things. There were some God-fearing people, but you see fraught with all the other stuff. Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's like we're, I'm dealing with the, 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 the actual layer of truth Whereas all these people touting their Christianity or their Mormonism in the case of people like Glenn Beck and all that, he just is fine with the architecture. He's fine with everything. He's fine with the world as it is. He wants to get it back and go. He wants the United States to get back on track and do more. Well, we never, you know, we've, being on track, um, it's been a land torn with war, strife, depression, all caused by people. The churches are there as like a band-aid, but basically they don't do anything, and uh, they've been unable. I don't care how many times a person goes to Bible school, which is a waste of time, or goes to um, church. They, all you have to do is see that they're completely ineffective. And, um, you know, they might be good with doing charity and things like that, and for that, sure, that's, that's great, that's wonderful. But the point is, is... They could not stave off. The, in, in fact, not only did they not stave off the time of the end of the United States, which is enshrouded in a prophetic mystery, and I can't talk about it because, see, there are people that just, you know, if there's a prophecy, they want to go quash it. Right, no, there's no prophecies. There are no gifts of Rima. There's no gifts of the Spirit. Those are um, all considered to be irrelevant and off point, and they don't exist. The church is dead. Uh, just as America is dead. America is post-America, and, uh, and you know, no one will ever convince me of that otherwise. I mean, I, you know, I, I did my part, and then you know, it ended in, and in the eyes of the world, not just in the eyes. Of, remember I said when God speaks, the world knows. It's not like a few people over here or there get the real secret info and they really know what's going on where the rest of the people are stupid. That's not it at all. Speaks. The world knows it. United States ended. The world knows it. Now you'll see the coming apart of it, which would be the, the, just the complete collapse of the Republican Party, um, the rise of the dictator um, king, and the tyranny to follow is going to be horrible for people. And, and you know, we could say, okay, well-deserved. But a lot of the people, when, the, the, when this is foisted on them, they won't have a clue. And, you know, the, a lot of people will be praying and all that, but unfortunately it will be too late to, to get back anything that they had before. And so they will all become refugees, which may save their souls, uh, admittedly. You know, in the end, it's not about nation, it's about individuals. It's like, what are you going to do, you know? And they're either going to harden, you know, their position with God and, 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 and get free of the world, or they're going to um, bow down to Barack Hussein Obama, who offers a, a break on through to the other side by proxy, who offers the, you know, he'll take the pressure off of all this off of you, um, and by proxy, in other words, you know, other people that are understand what's going on, you can get in with that. And then, you know, presumably you'll avoid the, you'll be on the team and you'll re- reap the benefits of being, uh, how do they call it? Right with history. <laughs> 
so, you know, and, and Obama being in a sense, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the doling out guy, he's playing the role of Satan now. And no, I, I can't, you know, you, you have to try the uh, scriptures. I mean, you have to try the spirits and you have to test these scriptures of Daniel and, you know, but what I'm talking about, about Barack Obama, I'm not saying, I'm not going to say anything about the last kingdom because no one knows that. So it seems that, and I'm putting it out there and I somehow keep getting drawn to it. So that's a meaning something, but this last kingdom or the timing of it, no man will know the time and all that, but at a time when you least expect it, that will be the time of my coming. So there is this thing about his coming, but this idea that he's coming within people and that the outside, it's got nothing to do with that. That's insanity. That's denial. That is a, a method of coping that will lead to no faith. That will destroy you. I guarantee it. That Look, I, I did this with Buddhism. It's all about the within. You know, it's all about... You know, uh, you know, the 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 inner man being tamed, you know, from his base desires, so that he or she can have a better karmic outcome to 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 sow better and and thus reap better. Um, and uh, you know, yes, it's a works based uh, religion that has no God in it. You know, it has uh, this idea of the self and and uh, the void. It gets into deep esoteric Buddhist philosophy, but basically it's the idea that um, it's a philosophy called codependent. I know you don't need to hear this, but codependent origination or co-independent origination. The world exists because of desire. So we don't know where these desires came from or wherever they came from, they produced the world that we're in. And, you know, there are 10,000 hell, but they have a hell in Buddhism. They have 10,000 hell. They've a realm of 10,000 hells for people that live bad lives. And then, of course, you know, coming back in various forms into the earth, uh, <clears throat> having horrible lives and people that have nothing but bad luck. They'll say, well, in a prior life, you did this, that, or the other thing, and that's why you're having this now. Because, and we all agree, we agree with Buddhism that reap what you sow, and Hinduism, reap what you sow. Karma exists in, in both. Um, in these Eastern religions is really true, but both of them rely, you know, completely, uh, not on, not on prophecy. There's, there's kind of a prophecy in these, these various ages in Hinduism, uh, in esoteric Hinduism and the Vedas talk about, um, there'll be these final ages of which this, uh, the fourth Kalpa, I believe, is the final age. And in the Mayan calendar, time simply runs out right at this point. But be that as it may, if you're content to be grooving on your spiritual inner life while looking at the filth and disgusting situation on earth, the saddest thing I ever saw is whenever I go outside and just I would say go to Walmart or something, and I just, I feel sorry for them. I, I, I feel sorry for us. I feel sorry about the whole thing. And then when I hear about violence and people stabbing each other and people, you know, taking drugs and people, you know, victimized. And I feel terrible about that because I know most people that take drugs are doing it because of the pain uh, involved in being here. I understand it's really hard. And then the sad thing is we have such a beautiful planet but everybody is miserable. Everybody's at each other's throats. And it's, if World War III doesn't just arise out of the blue, it will just be every man for himself running each other through with swords because they're so angry they can't take it. So they're going to have to take it out on somebody. Book of Isaiah, Book of Ezekiel, etc., talks about a time when uh, every man will be against every man and run each other through. With, you know, it will be complete bedlam before the time of the end. It will be a time of tribulation unlike the world has ever seen, and it will be a time that um, no place is safe, total tyranny, complete uh, microchipping, unless you're in the underground, a complete lockdown of the, of, of the world where every soul will be numbered and cataloged for Satan and anyone found not to be worshiping the beast. 
uh, will be killed. Now, do you think that refers to some sort of internal profit, internal kind of feel good thing? Half the walk in Christianity is to be half of it. This is half the life in Christ. It's to be outraged with the world. To be at odds with your mother and your father and the people in the world that are holding these various positions where they think they're going to escape. You know, they're being the good little banker or baker or, or, or homemaker or whatever. And these, these, you know, placid situations are not placid. You know, these people are slated for destruction. And, but if you have the spirit of Christ being around them, being around them. Uh, no, the, for me, the criminals are the, 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 the law-abiding citizens. The criminals of God are the average citizens who, who, are, who are locked in. The actual criminals and homeless and, you know, ne'er-do-wells and whatever in society, they actually, percentage-wise, are doing better than the, um, than the overt criminals, which are the basic everyday people. The basic everyday people going to work and, and you know, paying their bills and having their families uh, are the enemy, the enemy of God. They're not my enemy, certainly. I, I appreciate law-abiding citizens and, and want a chance to um, uh, speak to them and to convince them to uh, be redeemed in Jesus Christ so that they don't go, you know, I understand the mistake of, you know, of there was a lot of pressure, and so you gave in, and you know, but there's a way, you know, you still have to get out of that. I'd, I'd love to have that conversation anytime, anywhere with anyone because um, my argument always wins. They always shut up in the end. You know, they'll shut up and they'll go, I just can't do it. You know, and that's fine. That's fine. I just can't do it. You're talking my job, you're talking my life, you're talking, and that's a whole other discussion. And you know, I go to church, you know, I, I have the, the, the bank sale, I pray, you know, I mean, you know, I have, you th I'm not good enough for God. Is that it? And um, no, it's that you can't serve two masters. It's, it's a spiritual thing. It's, a, it's an emotional thing. You know, it's a connection thing. It's like if you're any way, shape or form in the world, then your heart is with um, the God of this world. It's, it's, not, it, it's not personal you may merit some wonderful uh, results uh, karmically because of your um, reaping such good things and taking care of people and being such a nice person. I mean, even, you know, some of the biggest charity givers and everything are the mafia. They've done a wonderful job with, uh, uh, and some of the, you know, most of the organizations that and secret societies came out of guilds that in the past were violent and criminals, but now are legit. I mean, and they are the biggest charity givers. Absolutely. Those, those are all good things. And the idea that you get along with your neighbors and you cooperate with each other and you help each other out, all that's wonderful. There's just one little thing that, if I might, being like Detective Columbo, I just one last thing, uh, sir, ma'am. And that is, uh, the, being in the rank and file uh, spiritually, um, you can understand, right? That having no Holy Spirit within, right? And, you know, kind of faking it. You can understand that though you are seen as a good person, you can understand how you would um, burn, right? You understand, and, and when I say that, I mean in, in, before your death. I mean, you understand how that can all collapse on you right here and right now, right? You understand that all that stuff that you've been sowing to has come now to an end. And there, yes, I know there's a lot of you who are like, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. And you understand what Barack Hussein Obama is. I just am amazed how many people just don't understand. I'm not talking just well, this and that chatting with you. Regardless of whether this is the last king or not, the, 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 the Rima, the whole thing, the whole presentation, the presentations, plural, regarding Barack Hussein Obama have been something to pay attention to, not quibble with or say it's kind of like that person saying this or this. Just take it. It's for your understanding. It's not 
false. It's not speculation in that regard. The, the only speculation we have here is whether this is the end of time or not. Whether this is the end of time and the forever kingdom, of course, is timeless. So whether this is it or not, whether that's the guy or not, it doesn't matter. He is right. Look, gosh, you people are the densest people on earth. You know, you should be the most tuned in. It is what it is. Look at it. I talked to a fellow the other day who was telling me that uh, um, the churches had formed. Uh, there are church, churches formed that worship Obama. So I know there's been a spoof out there, but I mean, uh, there's other... That's not what I meant. No, about underground, not, not overtly, you know, but they're, but they're out there. And more of those are forming. You know, it's, it can't, you don't understand. Okay, where's the power... Maybe you don't know what power is. Maybe you don't know anything. I mean, I'm getting a little bit frustrated here because I'm seeing now in the spirit that you don't understand anything of what's going on. And to you, it's just like armchair Monday night quarterback, you know, morning quarterback speculation. And we toss around like some guy will say it's really, you know, Prince Charles. Well, he's too old now, so it's got to be Tony Blair. That's, I mean, you know, the, I'm not, this isn't um, spec. The, ah, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for us all. I'm really sorry for us all. Nobody can cut the wheat from the chaff anymore. Nobody has discernment. Christianity is dead. Everything is just is gone. Everything is gone. Everything is gone. I did my one unrehearsed lost to uh, to under a music bed of of uh, cinematic music to, to indicate war, to indicate a post war, post apocalyptic world where war and you know where people uh, no longer read but they pass the uh, uh, theology and, and and mythology and the history through to each other verbally, you know, orally. And, um, you know, it goes on like that a long time. And so I can tell you, you know, I'll just tell you, no, this won't be the end of time. But yes, you have. (laughs) And the Christians are going to do the same thing they did with Adolf Hitler. I I mean, the non-Christians who think they're Christians are going to do the same thing with Adolf Hitler that they did with Adolf Hitler with Obama. The same thing. They're going to basically enable him to do even more, including the Catholic Church. So which is basically the church of Satan right underneath. But on top, it's like running around with these fish hats, you know, of the God Dagon and little, you know, bright colored uh, feminine robes. It's really um, horrific to watch that. It's just, it's almost like watching Comedy Central. It's, it's absolutely disgusting. But the people are so far gone that at this point, the only thing left to do is hit the reset button. And I think they're getting ready to do that. So I guess what this podcast has to be is preparing you for the next life because this one's in the toilet. So I guess it's really to prepare you for the next, you know, if you lose it, the book of Daniel is very clear in Daniel 12 that, you know, you go on to be like stars, you know, in your, you know, everlasting consciousness of, of course, it's not the same. There's no ego or anything at that point there's no separate eye kind of thing but you know you're you're there like a rock right it's not person believe me it's a better state to be in self-consciousness is part of the fall of man um being self-aware is is uh is not not the issue um you know i said well main gods of god is self-aware we're made in his image so we're self-aware no self-awareness is it's it's the quality or the kind of self-awareness our self-awareness is called guilt and shame. And what happens is it's, it's all measured and compared to other people in competition. And then, you know, if you don't make the grade, then you can punish yourself and even die. I mean, it's, it's a very wicked, horrible thing that happened uh, genetically to us, but it did. So we got to move on. 
there's really no hope for the Christian church. I, I'm convinced of it. There's really no hope. I, I think the Christian church, I'm beginning to see this because God seems to really love his ironies where, you know, the, oh, it's the Christian church, so it's the church of Satan. It's the, the you know, you know what I mean? And, and everywhere you go, you have this, this problem. It's the Christian church, so, oh, therefore it's evil. I'm not going in there. I'd rather go to the Buddhist meeting because, you know, they're the same thing. There's controllers there handling the lambs who come in searching for solace. They don't want the, the whole Jesus thing because they're PC and all that. They've been controlled to think that's uncool. So they're, which, which they will eradicate Jesus completely from the, from the scene now going forward. He's, he's, he's on his way out. Numbers have crumbled even for the overt 501c3 corrupt churches. And um, they didn't have a real good hold on reality anyway. So now we have um, the end of it, you know. But I think, yeah, there'll be an overt church, you know, like in China. But that's not the real Christians there. <laughs> if they're approved by the state, and the state here is going to be harsher. I mean, there's now a drone that I saw that's based on a tuna, on a big tuna fish. And um, it's swimming in the pool. It swims exactly like a tuna. Yet it's a drone, and they've got these, these, these that were the, were the you know art imitating nature, or science imitating nature, and I don't know how long it can swim like that, but it swims just like a fish, and it cuts the same angles, and and wouldn't look any different to most people. It'd be very much you could very much disguise that as a as a as a lone tuna, and people wouldn't pick up on it. To patrol our coasts, uh, the Homeland Security Department of Homeland Security has ordered a bunch of these to make sure we stay safe on our coasts. So they're either getting ready for a war against us or a war against some phantom enemy. Apparently, according to, to the, you know, we don't have any enemies, so uh, we don't have anyone off our coast. And, and um, you know, but now here we are with this. Um, uh, of course, the real issue is um, in fighting for dominance and fighting to be the ultimate dictator. There's going to be a fight between Obama and Putin and various people. Um, could Obama, w will there be a time where his power is pulled? Yes, but most Christians don't even see who the guy is. They just see him as another president. And so I'm like, you know, you see, I in 2011 I left you know I've been leaving myself room on this end of time thing because that was never clear but that pattern that was mentioned in the book of Daniel that people say well he's the king of the south because he came from Africa and whatnot and they can keep on speculating I'm not even I see I didn't even do that what I've done is to say that he matches and I'm I'm looking at the the, the, the deeper meaning of these verses because they parallel one another. You can read them right in order and they, you know, from Daniel 7, uh, 8, 9, and 11, you can read it right in order where it pertains to uh, the last king, the fierce king, the king of the south, whatever, and it all lines up. And someone else said to me, you know, but he's not going to make the peace treaty with Israel uh, if you see those things happening, you know, then you can have some faith in it. But I'm, just look at, look at it like this. If he matches that description, which he does to a T, then there's two conclusions that could be drawn. One, that this is it, that Daniel, that the Bible is actually accurate. And this is that time and that's, the, you know, the person and it's going off the cliff or whatever. Or you can look at it another way. He fits the pattern of one possessed by Satan. You know, this would be the fierce king, the last king. This will be the, 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 the tribulation king, if you will, who will conquer wonderfully and destroy many wonderfully, who will, who will get whatever he wants, including mass destruction through war. Um, and, and, and will try to take hold of, the, of, of uh, Jerusalem, but in that he will fail. I mean, that's basically what, you know, what I've drawn from it after looking at it, I don't know, a number of years now. I've kind of kept going back to that. And, uh, you know, it's just uncanny. And when you, see, when you see the powers, I know most of you don't understand powers because you watch television. So how could you notice when there's someone in the room that has power and someone that doesn't? 
Um, you know, unless you're told. How would you understand that? Well, you know, the reason I'm saying this is because I'm showing you just how spiritually bankrupt you really are. And because you should already by now have the ability to discern the powers wherever you go for your own protection, if nothing else. And instead, um, we have this sort of, instead of warfare out there, which it should be, and, and you not be moved off your position, we have a lot of way, I've, look, I've, I've been traumatized. I've had to run home and, you know, and kind of get away from those kind of things going on. But I don't scare me now. I mean, you know, obviously. But I do see the ones in the room. Who's this? Who's that? Who's up? Who's down? Who's, and all their ranking. And you should walk in the room and have it all boom like that with one glance. That's what someone trained in warfare would do. Honed. Yeah, it could mean your life. Someone could poison you. They could do this. Yeah, yeah it, could, it could even mean your life. That's right. I think a lot of people die because God just says, you're so stupid, I'm just getting you out of here. You just haven't learned one thing while you were here. You know? <laughs> Not one thing. The whole point of being in Christ and be Christ-like is to be able to take that warfare to be, you know, gentle as a dove, but, you know, uh, definitely um, discerning and, uh, and, 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 and wise as a serpent. To be wise as a serpent, you know, to, because these people that have this power in them are wise. They know what's going on. You need to be that wise to be able to walk among them without getting freaked out or moved around or hurt real bad. And yeah, they get into the electricity and they do things. I, I understand that. And there, there's, there's never an attempt not to do harm because they get together as a collective to throw the, the whammy beam on you, you know, and all kinds of things because they're not themselves. They're being led around by the nose and they're being collectively used or their soul power is being used and linked up together to f force that beam, that beam of kill and destroy, that, that uh, Death Star beam on you and looking for anyone else. And that's basically the whole point here. Victory to them is a whole world of them without you. You understand that? A whole world of, of them without you. That's what they're going, that's why they're frothing at the mouth right now. That's why they're just, they don't care. They're, sh they're showing their hand in public. They're showing you all their evil, but what? No, the Christians, don't ca count on the Christians. See no evil, hear no evil, do, right? They're sitting there on the, not seeing what's come right before them and not grappling with it. And they're just sitting there. Can you stand it? I'm going to ban Christians. Um, I, the word Christian is ridiculous. We have to have another word. It's been destroyed by, you know, fakes, charlatans, criminals. I don't trust anybody, you know, at this point. I've been, I've been you know, down the road so many times of disappointment and, uh, you know, just, just seeing, you know, it's, someone, it's like, whoop, there it is. You know, eventually it just comes out. And it's like, oh, it's like that, huh? So it always gets that mono a mono thing. It's, it's like, hey, dude, it's not about you versus me, idiot. It's, it's not about that at all. It's about powers versus powers that are beyond us. We have more in common. We should not hate each other, but should work together to overcome. I know that's, that concept's totally above your heads. You know, it's, it's gonna, I'll have to go underground. I don't know that there's any way that I can actually, I, I, you know, it's like being in a, cage and trying to speak with this muffler over my mouth which makes it so no one can hear anything I'm saying and people have missed the point entirely and I can see by feedback they missed the you know no I'm not writing it I'm not going to waste my time you know you people have to figure it out for yourselves you know it's like you there's nothing I can do after I've given the podcast. The podcast is, is, is spiritual. It goes to different people, like speaks to them directly. 
you know, and, and, and the thing is, is this in the wall and I'm, and I'm, I know I'm jumping around here because I've, I'm just kind of disturbed, you know, that, that look, the thing is, is that we have, okay, half our walk is asking God to end this. How can any feeling thinking person look at the world and say, it's okay with me. That is unacceptable. And how can a God leave the world in the state it's in, which is not even an equilibrium? It's so evil, it's beyond, it's beyond light versus dark and the balances of opposites. It's beyond that. It's in an, an abnormal situation. And if you're not pining for the Lord and his return, there is, well, I'll just put it this way, then you don't know him and you're not with him and there is no connection there. Because without that, you know, like a, like a, like a bride, uh, you know, yearning for her husband who's away, you know, who's in love with him. You know, it's, if, if it isn't like that, then, uh, and, and, and yeah, the farm and the, the, the homestead, everything's gone to, to hell in a handbasket. And, 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 you know, now it's more like a rescue mission. And I know there's all kinds of people. I have friends who, who believe in the rapture, okay? And people who are very accurate, who I believe are called, you know, prophetically by the Lord, who, who, who believe that, you see, and, and God bless them. They can't imagine for a moment that the Lord's going to have them go through this horrible thing. And I even put forth this idea of a nuclear rapture. I said, you know, so when the light of the nuclear bomb hits, which probably will be, the bombs will be planted, right? The real nukes will be planted ahead of time. <laughs> the little guys in the little room, you know, planning it all. They're, they have nothing to do with, there's no nations at war. It's just them, you know, being evil. <laughs> but, okay, so the, the light of, of the nuke goes off and you just run into it and leap into it knowing that the Lord is there, that the light itself is it's like a portal provided by the Lord. Now, I offered that about 2003 or something as a, you know, kind of a, a way of um, mollifying the uh, rapture folks, you know, who are kind of intent on that as a possibility because you would feel no pain, no nothing. You you go into the light. And also, I believe that that light and that radiation emitted, that, that, that uh, reaction that happens is a supernatural portal. So in a sense, you go from life to life, you don't even have death. So that's the best I can do in that, in, on that regard, that 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 um and you know the wheat the, the wheat and the chaff are divided the the people of the lord go with the lord in that instance in that instant and the people that and that's like the twinkling of the eye you know that that can fit all that but the people not of the lord they don't go with the lord in that instant so in a sense that dividing and that 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 spiriting way of the church you know i know that sounds like a like kind of a wild phantasm in a way that, that you would have, you know, this spiriting away of the church via the nuclear light, the portal that opens up. But God can use, he, see, he works through people. He's a spirit, you know? So he works through people, just like Christ is a spirit. You know, you can't say where he is. He's just everywhere and he's working through everything. And <clears throat> so for the one person, it's destruction. But for you, it would be your... um your spaceship home, you know, it'd be your, your ticket out of here and, uh, you know, and, and, and remaining conscious and all that could be possible within that context. So, and, and I think they haven't really used nuclear war because the, maybe they're afraid that, you know, see, one of the problems is they have to destroy Jesus completely, you know, and make sure no one is saved before they do the mass extermination. You know, that's, that's a part of it. They don't want people to repent at the last minute. So that's why they have to have this sudden war that no one's ready for and make sure everyone has bitten of the apple and everyone is basically ineligible and then kill them. Once they got you, then they want to kill you. And that's basically the satanic spirit. Um, back to Barack Hussein Obama. So we're watching this go on, fitting the description, you know, and unfortunately there are people that just won't see it. They just, you know, like a guy on Facebook, he threw at me, you know, one of a, a dear brother, you know, good guy. He threw at me Tony Blair, and it's like he can't see what's going on. You see, he's, he just feels that Obama's contributing to the, 
New World Order and contributing to the, uh, the, 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 you know, the end of days, the fall of Babylon. It's, it's, it's not really even about that. You don't see that there's a big difference between these two guys. One, that one person on this earth is filled with this power being worshipped. There's only one person. It's special. You'd think the, quote, Christians, unquote, would all be going, oh, my God, look at that. But they're not. And I'm thinking about Adolf Hitler and some of the other you know, dictators and how they got to be where they are, but being worshipped. I, I think this situation is much more extreme than that. I think the power is much more grand. Now, I could be wrong. Power could be pulled. God can give and then take away. God has allowed, obviously, this power to, to transfer into a human. He could also pull it away. And you could be looking at, you know, uh, 2016 comes some kind of an election and, you know, there's a changing of the guard. But I really don't think so. I don't think anyone's ever seen anything like this, which is why you have these churches springing up. I don't think we've seen something like this. The first people who should have been on the spot is the prophetic community. Should have been right on this. But no. Okay. And what does that show me? That shows me that Christianity is dead. Jesus is basically dead here, and this whole thing is dead. That's what it shows me. That this is dead, dry bones, and all this is is a wasteland already. There may be buildings here and people walking around, but they're 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 in delusion and and they're basically gone, you know. So that's all there is here. We're just you know, uh, the book of Eli as a movie as a, as a as a tableau of what we're looking at is already in evidence. It's just you know, it's still things are standing, but basically that's what we're dealing with. And, um, there's no way that I can, that I can make my point. My words are silenced. And, uh, I think I pointed this thing out and I know there's people that understand, but it's, it's, it's the same people. You know what it is? It's like it's the same people in the classroom every time they get the A's, the same people in the classroom who basically always have their hands up for the answer. And then there's this kind of wider group that just never seems to get it, you know, and uh, they may have some ulterior motive for being there. I don't know, but they just can't hear it. I mean, you'd be surprised. Some of the emails are just like, you know, um, I had one woman telling me how great Obama was because, you know, he, he's providing for these poor people. So he's like a sugar daddy. And and she's going on and on about it. And I'm like, as if I'm against, you know, as I'm against helping people. Like, you know, the, the insinuation, the insult was that I am I am against helping out poor people, helping out people that can't eat. And, and, and you know, because I mentioned something about the, the, the proliferation of food stamps, which is a way to buy votes. But, I mean, you can't say that because someone like this pops up and is offended, missing the entire point. Yeah. Missing the entire point. And, you know, and, and, I'm, and then calling me basically a, you know, Ward Cleaver kind of, you know, uh, old white guy out of touch with reality, you know, because of the fact that I was uh, pro-freedom and, 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 you know, pro-capitalism and pro free markets and libertarian and and that makes me this and i'm like you know you're such an idiot woman you're back in you know 1930 you know 1925 soviet russia that's basically where you are you're just a fool and i was you know i was nice to the person because i realized they just they were so ignorant that i couldn't address them i just had to try to say a few nice things and go away but I mean, you know, when I f- found that there were so many more like her, in other words, there were so many more like that. And, I'm, and you know, probably all of California is like her to the point where, um, and they don't understand, you know, yes, it's not about the goodies. It's about being in the stream of hypnosis of Barack Hussein Obama. And they defend him. This is a person that used to listen to the podcast. And then, you know, a person that claimed to be a targeted individual and, 
struggling with that. And then suddenly she's singing Obama's praises. I, I, it's, it suddenly switched like, like, a, like the switch flipped and there's a different person. It's, that's what I'm talking, can't you see? Did I have that with Clinton? No. Did I have that with anybody else? No. Have we had that with anybody else in history, the, the kind of thing we're looking at now? No. So that would be something the prophetic community ought to be all over it, right? There is no prophetic community. That's the point. There is none. And, and um, and then I sort of lambasted the kingdom within thing. I, I taught uh, the I am. The kingdom within just really is a way that Jesus was trying to under, make people understand all there is is I am, you know, and that's really John 17. There is I am and there is nothing else. It's a mystery, you know, when you enter into it, you realize, ah, everything's okay, God's in, uh, you know, another way of putting it is God's in control, God's within you, God's guiding you, you know, it's in control, even though you may hate yourself. And, you know, if you don't hate yourself, there's something wrong with you, basically. Um, uh, you know, if you don't hate, like, what your flesh does, there's, well, obviously you shouldn't be listening here because there's no point for you, there's no hope for you. <laughs> If you don't have a problem with, if you think your 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 crap doesn't stink and 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 all that, I mean, you're you're just out of your mind. You know, our crap stinks bad, and it's 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 now been able to run loose, you know, and it's piled up everywhere, and it's just basically killing people with the stench, and the and the fumes are rising to, to the Almighty God, you know, who is who has uh, been nothing but tolerant. Nothing but patient, nothing but guiding individuals home, nothing but kind, nothing but loving. And people are saying he's a hateful God because, you know, it's just like it's people don't, are looking at like he, in a personal way. It's not that. Just picture um, an intervention holding back the forces of evil that would kill everybody a long time ago and holding them back so that people can find their way home to recognize that. God is within them, okay? I recognize, you know, that, that God is within us, but also without, outside of us. And the real kingdom, obviously, within is, is, is how we're turned backwards in order to have this life, in order to have physical life. But God is also the God of physical life. And so that it's divided between that and the exterior physical world, which we are called to change, if it's that evil, we need to fight against it. The only way to fight against it is to be in prayer in the Lord and asking him for guidance as a nation and turning back to him, and he will bless that nation. And so he is involved in nations, markets, uh, wars, and external things like time and space. And without a balance of inner and outer, you are only walking half a walk in Jesus. Uh, what I tried to do, Buddhism, which is basically the kingdom is within, you know, it's, it's, it's all your fault, too, if you screw up. You know, whatever your life is or events happen to you, it's, it's your fault. That's the one thing that killed me about Buddhism. Anything that happens to you, it, like at random, it's your fault. <laughs> you are God. You, know, you're, you are the Buddha. You're responsible for stuff that actually happens to you out of the blue, where you're victimized by something or another. Then it's your fault. It's your fault. And I couldn't stand, I, you know, and I just got so upset about that because through no fault of my own, things have happened. And I'm sure no fault of your own. And, and you wonder why. And the only plausible answer is God and the fall of man and, and the Bible. And, the, and, you know, you have to decipher these stories as to how we got to where we are. But when you finally decipher the stories, you realize there was an intervention of evil that put man in a, in a, in a prison physically uh, through DNA manipulation and whatnot that, that kept us held hostage for use by this other realm that was thrown out from God or out, outcast from God, a rebel from God, and that this force and this power seeks to use humanity for its own purposes of giving itself life, being jealous of the life that God gave you know these creatures called humans and seeks to control that and has been in control 80% evil the whole time. And, you know, the whole work of Christ would be then ultimately to overturn this system 
and to be king of king, lord of lords. In other words, the, the, the forever kingdom of Daniel that comes, that, is, that the, the, the world is given to the saints and, and to, the, to the people of the Lord. But the people are changed into not sin. They're changed into something else as well. And it's kind of murky right there. But this, this idea, you can't have one without the other. There is no peace inside where there's no peace out there. You can't ever really be at peace because it would be a blasphemy to be, you know, at peace while people are starving, for example, you know, at peace while people, while children are crying. You can't be at peace with that, you, you know. So this kingdom that is both internal and external, that is overt and covert, that is, um, you know, that is the, 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 the thing called reality that is m- uh, misunderstood because a forever kingdom would be a different dimension. And if they put you in that dimension right now, it wouldn't be anything physical like the thing you're in here today. Um, but if there's no yearning to get into that, you know, and people think that, okay, I'm going to die, I'm going to go there, um, you know, and it's all kind of a spiritual thing. There's peace inside, but outside there's, there's not. Um, no, there is no peace inside. People have tortured, that becomes a works that I'm going to focus inside. And I'm going to just sit there and pray all day inside. I'm going to keep it all inside. And I'm, I'm cool. It's all, you know, I'm flowing. And uh, look, everyone else is all upset and running this way and that. But I have, I got Jesus. I'm grounded. So I'm okay. No, um, the, the people that are in the, 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 the people who are driven to speak and to, 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 to write music and to do things against this thing, are are um, disturbed, or they wouldn't be doing that. And if they're in concert with the Lord, or they wouldn't be doing that. And so you can't say that. It's wrong. You know, it's just it's inaccurate. But I see so many different people. I see so many different people doing so many different things, trying to find an angle. You know, trying to find some angle, that, some exclusive angle, where they can kind of make this whole thing work, and it doesn't work. The people have lost their faith because um, they were shepherded by uh, traitors, you know, whose intent is to turn them to the system. And, uh, you know, you ask anybody, are you willing to give your life up for Jesus? Well, he, oh, they'll, maybe they'll say yes just to, because they know that's the right answer. But no, they're not. And that's not even the question. The question is, are you willing, it, it really gets down to this. Are you willing, if the mob is going one way and they want you to join them or they'll kill you, you join them no matter what the morals are, no matter what the sellout is, or do you remain sovereign, you know, as a person? Because when you become part of the collective, you then are a criminal. You're responsible for all the murders that the, that the collective does. And that's one of the problems with joining Satan is you join the liars and murderers. So right off the bat, you're a liar and a murderer on day one, as you were when you were kids. You knew that something happened to you, right? And, but, you know, you knew all this good stuff was happening, but they don't pay you for nothing, do they? No, you're involved in a cover-up. You know, you're, doing, you're doing the bidding of, you know, these people. You're helping that system out, so you're going to get a reward. It's very simple. And those who choose not to, you're going to turn them in. You're going to put the, the, the death ray on them. You're going to make sure they have a miserable life and you're going to consider that to be a victory for you, which is despicable, disgusting, and makes you a liar, a cheat, a um, selfish bastard, murderer, and um, destroyer. And you've been that since you were a kid. Maybe not you doing it all, but you are hooked, linked, and uh, let me just put it another way. You try to get yourself out of it, okay? Try for one week not to do what you're told. It's only with God can you do that. Only with God can you actually walk through this thing. So I guess that would be being in the kingdom, right? Because you're, when you're with God, a believer in Jesus Christ, washed by the blood of Christ, you are then legally owing nothing to that. You, you are, are free of that. 
And they get mad. They say, well, you're not going to help us out. You know, if we all get on the same team here, then we'll have prosperity again. No, you won't. You watch them. They'll try to double down on it. Now they'll say, the real problem is we got people that don't agree. If we can get rid of them, then we'll get some money again. Oh, I know, I know, I know. It's, I, I hate to even think that because it makes me so disgusted with my fellow uh, man that I just almost feel like spitting on him rather than saying hello. And, and that's my fault. That's my flaw, you know, that I see people for what they are and then I'm disgusted. I look at myself in the mirror and I'm disgusted with that as well. And so basically I'm just disgusted with, with myself, with them, with everything. And that's not a very good state to be in. So I try to reel it back. I try not to be so observant. I try to kind of go into a fog haze like they are and try to get through the day. So regardless of whether this is the end of time, the people that kind of work out the the symmetry and the mathematics of the Bible and everything, they say it is in the last, like, say, few years or whatever that, you know, and, and there have been people before that had the timeline and, you know, going back then. And there are people that have the timeline going out to 3,000 and or whatever. Um, but for my intents and purposes, I'm just going to tell you this. For, for, for the purposes of this discussion, let's just stipulate that time never ends. That we'll leave this place, but it will, you know, I'm sure somewhere it will exist going on. Okay. Time never ends. It uh, ends when you die, then you go somewhere else. But, I mean, time never ends. So let's stipulate that time never ends. We'll stipulate that time never ends. That uh, there really is no um, a total ignorance of the God of the Bible. That Jesus, the Bible, and Christianity are dead. Because my, my proof is that the Christians have no faith. The, 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 the commercial Christians have no faith. And they don't even see, nor do they care about uh, prophecy. And part of prophecy is to wonder about things. The, the Lord said, no sign will be given to this generation except the sign of Jonas the prophet, and, uh, you know, in other words, you, you know, there's no sign in the belly of the whale, right? It's darkness. And so there's your sign for you, nothing. And I would tell you, well, to decipher that scripture means there'll be nothing for you, the people who are carnal and not spiritual, but for the spiritual person, there are signs and wonders daily, daily. Certainly I've had my fill the last week. I mean, unbelievable amount. I've seen a whole lot of things which would constitute, um, if you could see into that realm, then it, you would see signs and wonders. But, but no, to the generation of blind people, there's going to be no sign given. You're going to remain blind. To the people with spiritual understanding whose eyes are open, there's going to be supernatural events going on every day. And, and plenty of signs. Um, is there a sign of his coming? No, when you least expect it, that's when, that's when it will happen. A flip, um, which I've also likened to a mass extinction event where there could be like a mass extinction and, the, and the, the prophecies of the Bible and the fall of Babylon and everything are just really, in a sense, an outer story, but there's an inner deciphering meaning to the story of Revelation that would, would indicate that there'll be a sudden end to all things Hence, chapter 21 of the book of Revelation, the, the new Jerusalem comes out of the sky out of nowhere. And, um, you know, it just indicates a new heaven, new earth, new this, new that, meaning there must be a mass extinction. You know, a cosmological event, perhaps. That the fall of ba Babylon could be characterized by, you know, World War II. It could be characterized as the fall of the 1929 stock market. It could be characterized as the complete global collapse and the, and the, and the you know, tyrannical communist wanting to erect a one world order. Uh, and anything like that, and, you know, um, in the uh, secular world could be considered to be the fulfillment. But that doesn't necessarily mean there's a sudden quash. People have been trying to time the end. 
for, from the very beginning because the scriptures indicate that a, a yearning to do that is um, putting your attention on God and so therefore he allows it. But then Jesus comes in and says, you know, but you're not going to be accurate. And, um, you know, that, that because for thousands of years people have made these predictions and been inaccurate. And, and um, when Jonah, you know, with the Nineveh situation where he was, the people did repent, so the things that he prophesied about did not happen. He was beside himself feeling like a failure. So there's always been this. But then again, there's always been prophets, like, around until now. The prophets were sent by the Lord to confront people about this world and to confront people about, you know, um, the world to come and to confront people and to, to, to tell people about the coming kingdom and to tell people that it's going to be okay in the end. The denial of this world as a real world, which we've done plenty of, but the denial of the physical world as being legitimate before God is ridiculous. That's what the Gnostics would do. And, you know, there's a lot of people that just um, poo-poo any talk of any kind of end time or time out or whatever in favor of this inner thing and, and the inner... Th- Let me tell you something. If that's all it is, count me out as any kind of believer that I'm out of here. If that's what's going on, I'm done. I'll just be an atheist. I'll go on my own. Thank you. But that's not what's happening. You know, I mean, if that's all it was, you would have never gotten me around this in the first place. I called on God because I was in serious trouble. God called on me that same time. And it's been together ever since. And there's been nothing but supernatural activity from day one. And I've had my eyes full with supernatural signs and wonders and miracles and and just events that couldn't happen. It's been daily. What are you talking about? There'll be no sign given. These blind, deaf, and dumb Christians wandering around with their thumbs up there, you know what, thinking, (laughs) you know, somehow lightning's going to strike and and all telling each other that everything is fine. When the world's burning, it's not fine. This is sticking your head in the sand. This is doing the opposite of what the Bible calls you to do. This is the opposite of God's word. If, if they were true to the Lord, I mean, they wouldn't have put up with Adolf Hitler in the first place. So you can just eliminate the Church of Germany completely and America, it's the same thing. Um, and furthermore, America wouldn't, would still be here which it isn't. What it is, I don't, I don't recognize. It's something else altogether than when, when I was growing up and even five years ago. So basically, uh, the Lord told me to say America's over, which would also indicate, you know, that we're on some kind of a countdown to something terrible. So let's just take where we are right now. We have a dictator king who is going to wage war with the whole world. And um, we have you, the cannon fodder, who's all going to die. And um, we have a situation that, that is beyond narcissism, beyond self-worship. We actually have, um, you know, covert kind of churches rising up to worship this king who is a, whose identity is really king of Egypt, of Libya, of, you know, conqueror or whatever, and fits this description in the book of Daniel to a T. The, the thing we don't have is nobody knows when time ends or when it doesn't. People are looking for this. Uh, they say Obama won't make a, a peace treaty in Israel. Don't be so sure. He will. But I think we're looking at this whole end thing wrong. I think the events people are looking for are never going to happen in that way. And I also believe that, that for some reason I have to say the, these words. Time will never end. It's never going to end. So we're going to stipulate that there is no end to it. That We're just stipulating it. It may be wrong. It could be arbitrary. I'm just putting out there as an arbitrary thing we're going to stipulate so that we can talk about this uh, situation with the king and with the United States and what happened to it 
and and where it's going. Where the, the church, no, the church was out delayed. They had no idea. They think they're going to get it back. They they have no idea what happened to them. They, and they're not going to have any idea, and they're never going to repent. And they're not going to repent even when they're you know when there's persecution. And you know that maybe you know uh, rolling up their sleeves and feeding the poor will get them some grace. I don't know. It's just out of my hands. There's nothing I can do about it. People won't repent for the basic thing of Satan. So therefore, how can anyone help them? If you won't do that much, I mean, do you really want to conform to Satan now? You think you're going to get something? No, I know, I know, sorry. The conforming to Satan now today means Barack Obama. You know, bowing down. And, and, and if you do that, you will, things will go. I mean, it's, it's, it's clear what it is. Why is no one saying anything? Why is it silent? I just told you I had people that were, you know, maybe they're on the fence with Jesus, but they've gone over to the Barack Obama side or the satanic side, if you like, because there's an avenue through Obama to that promised land. Heaven now, whatever. You know, a future. That's what's going on. That's what won the election. That's, that's, that was the end of America. That, that, that's the whole thing. It's, it's spiritual. I mean, people just don't see it. And I'm so frustrated. I can't tell them. And nobody, they want to argue, oh, no, it's this guy. That We're going to watch the news and kind of be like a Monday morning quarterback on it. So if anything real does come down the pike or hits them, they'll be the, the Christian will be the last to know. The people of the world will know before them what's going on. They are the blindest, the dumbest, and the deafest of all. That's got to be a punishment, right? That's the opposite of the way it should be. Not only do they not warn each other, but they go, they're kind of like Romney going to the White House. He went to bow down and to kiss the ring of Obama as the king. Because in Mormonism, they have a, a, a pecking order like that, and they... they they are definitely satanic, and they definitely um, follow that pecking order. I mean, they, they have the same architecture as Washington, D.C. I mean, they're... <laughs> so, you know, no, I always knew Romney was, 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 had that Mormonism. I don't think anybody, it's any mystery what Mormonism is. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a false prophet and a false, um, you know, Obama would like that because, you know, being that he's, he's like, you know, way more powerful than Joseph Smith ever was and um, is there to receive worship, on, uh, in fact, and received worship from Romney, who cut some sort of deal with him, and uh, maybe he'll have some role to play in helping people conform to the new boss, same as the old boss. But this thing is, in my opinion, we've stipulated that, no, it'll never run out, there'll never be an end of time, there's never going to be anything here, never a kingdom of God, never, never, and it's just going to be evil, 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 evil till man extinguishes himself uh, just from being so so effing evil. And he's just going to go down as a huge uh, plague will come and it will kill everybody on earth and that will be the end of the uh, mankind um, perversion. So if you want to think like that, which I guess today most Christians do. That's the way they think, um, because they, you know, want to be discerning, and they realize that it, this nobody. If you ask any Christian, "Is this it?" They'll say, "No, no, it goes on forever." They won't say it goes on forever, but they'll say, "No, no, this isn't the time. When it is, I don't know." But you know, I'm just focusing on the here and now. What I, you know, I just want to live for Jesus every day. Oh, really? <laughs> well, how are you helping me? You know, a brother in Christ. How are you helping me, another Jesus guy? Answer, you're not helping at all. You're hurting. I just want to serve the Lord every day. Uh huh. Can you, it's like this broken record that goes on and on. Everything that spews out of there. It's like the Calvary Chapel uh, people that come out of their school of ministry. They all talk and act and even dress the same and their voices are all the same. They're like interchangeable puppets. You know, it's unbelievable. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's literally sad, you know, but uh, maybe the key is that no one sees it. 
So, it's okay. And the massive baptisms, you know. <laughs> the party atmosphere of the evangelical church. The, the, uh... I'm not going to c- condemn people's religious nature coming forth. It's just, I hate to see them shoot themselves in the foot by having the first principle out of whack. You know, the first thing that is, you know, for there to be a conversion to the Holy Spirit, which would mean that you would be de- disconformed from the satanic world. And since that never did happen, not seemingly not in America, it's the opposite is true. Um, you know, but what can he do? I can't do anything about it. Nothing I can do about it. I, and, and you know what? It's a person's right. If they want to double down on this blend of everything is everything, they're welcome to do it. Because there's no guarantee you're saved in Jesus other than, you know, something in your heart that you may know or not know, but there's no surety. You know, the people, people wonder from time to time if they really are saved, and certainly I do. That's, without that, you're not, you're not with the Lord. Doubt must creep in. You know, could I be saved, really? Aren't I participating in the satanic system enough? You know, I'm, I follow the rules around here. I do this, I do that. I mean, you know, I'm not anathema. I, I, I pay my taxes. I follow the laws. I'm cordial with my neighbors. I give them anything I can of help if they need it. You know, I mean, I see eye to eye on this, but uh, certainly I'm, I'm always willing to overlook that and try to be civil, try to be nice, try to get along. In a way, am I giving comfort to the enemy because they think I don't know that they're the enemy and so there's this little song and dance at the masquerade that goes, I don't care about that. I'm too old to worry about that. You know, it used to freak me out, but now it no longer does. I just feel sorry for them. So occasionally I'll reach across the aisle and say, you know, but you don't want to insult people that will go, I've been a Christian for 25 years. What the heck are you talking about? You judging and condemning me? It's like, no, I just, never mind. I could see that you were stuck in the system and I thought, but never mind, you're not ready. What might help is a good nuclear war. Uh, you know, the survivors of that will, of course, envy the dead. But they would, you know, there wouldn't be any more system to conform to in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. <laughs> they would be free. And their suffering would be Christ. In a sense, they would be delivered. Hallelujah. And, you know, the Church of China would pray for the American church constantly that there would be persecution and that would save the church. That certain churches would start waking up and their congregations and they would actually get into the fight rather than just kicking the can down the road for another week, another week. You know, when I get my retirement, then, um, then, I'll, then I'll get right with Jesus. I'll really go all the way then. You know, when, I'm, when I've got enough fun, right now I don't have enough financial, and I can't afford for that supernatural thing to happen where people just start dissing me. So I've got to still keep my hand in the game over here. I've got to keep my hand in the game, and you know, want to keep your hand in the game and be with Jesus at the same time. Keep that hand in the game be with Jesus at the same time, and that's like almost every Christian in Orange County in California. <laughs> but I'm, I mentioned Orange County because of the wealth, that it's a wealthy county, you know what I mean, and, and fairly conservative. And, you know, of conservative, uh, that doesn't matter. Conservative, liberal, it's the same deal that's offered to everybody. So I'm just here to tell you that, 
you know, before you die, since we're going into that time of war, pain, strife, uh, and, and horrible, horrible things, tyranny, that um, before there's, you know, a persecution of everybody, um, it wouldn't be imprudent of you to, to start getting, you know, right because there's going to be nothing of, to save anyway. You know, should this thing continue in the way it's going? I mean, you could look, war is hell. And when the war comes, certainly there's going to be, uh, on that day, there won't be any people confused about, you know, their, their, who they serve and who their daddy is. I mean, on that day, it's going to be everybody's going to have Jesus on that day. And it's going to be nothing else but. And, you know, and, and people tend to straighten up real fast when they're looking at that kind of horror coming down the pike where they could just die, you know. I mean, then people tend to get real fast and real straight right away with the Lord. And, and that's true. So we could look at that as some kind of a, a, of a gift or, or something. Um, about satanic abuse in the churches, well, I've seen it since I was a kid, so I guess uh, it's no different from society, though. It's, it's, it's the same abuse everywhere, so it's kind of like, okay, so it's in the church. Um, there wouldn't be anything like that on a day of death. If, if it was just like a, like, like say a comet would hit and that's going to end everyone, every life on earth or a sun event is going to end every life on earth within a week. And that week you would see a lot of, and this is what they're trying to prevent. Everybody would get right with the Lord <laughs> in the, the, in whatever way that's within them to do so. You know, there wouldn't be any more game because there's no more Santa Claus giving out the goodies. You know, the jobs and the perks and this and that. There'd be no more, you know, sugar daddy. And isn't that all we're talking about? That there's a sugar daddy uh, system here? Isn't that all? It, and, but that takes your soul so that you are ineligible to go with the Lord. And so your life ends or you burn one or the other. Or there's pain and suffering for all the wrongs that have been done versus, you know, escaping this, you know, horrible situation here and going on to where there is equilibrium in the Lord. That there will be a dividing between the sheep and the goats, that everything is not everything and that all people are not, you know, the same and they're just, you know, God understands it's, it's cool. You know, that would be diminishing the role of free will and the Lord gives free will. You're free to choose. Satan or Christ, and, uh, you know, if you like God or Satan. And um, each one, there's a system there. And the system of God is Christ, and the system of um, Satan is the world. So you're free to choose. If the world system collapses, then I guess on that day, most people will just have go to the default position of God. I don't know how he'll deal with that. I, I'm, I'm fine with that. See, my, the reason I speak in the way I do is because for the, the chance that people from um, the world will hear so that they would just wake up and get with it. But more increasingly now, they doubt that there is a paradigm like the one I put forth. They believe that everything is everything and kind of random. And then it's cool, you know, that there's no oversight and that whatever you do doesn't really matter um, you know, the things you do in secret won't ever be known and things like that, which is like all our life, every day of our life is on a video camera. I mean, everything you do is seen and recorded. There's nothing that escapes that. That's just the part of being in this world. It's like having 24 hour surveillance on you. So <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do. No, I'm frustrated because you know, the end of the United States, that didn't have to, the rise of this dictator king, that didn't have to happen. You know, and the fact that everyone's cheering it on, it's just, you know, FDR, which is one of Obama's great um, he idols, uh, nearly became a dictator with several terms in office, you know, more than two terms, obviously. And um, they have four, I, I, it's an insane thing like that. But he, 
was cheered as he brought socialism in and cheered as he almost got it to the, to the point where every socialist wet dream is having a totalitarian state where the state dictates your thoughts, 1984, if you like. That's the goal. It's not socialism. It's totalitarianism. That's the ultimate goal of the socialist and the Marxist. That they want totalitarianism, which they had for a while in the Soviet Union and certainly China. But that's the goal. It's, 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 there's no goal of fairness. That's, that's ridiculous. It's, they just buy votes to get power, and once they have the power, then they stop the food stamps and they stop all this nonsense of free give giveaways. They stop that. But the other thing they're involved in is the trading of souls. And they're responsible for delivering to Satan, their God, to Lucifer, their God, which is the God of communism. All the elites in communism worship Lucifer. That's a known fact. While telling everyone else to be atheists. Known fact. Okay, so they're responsible for delivering all these souls by making them bow down to that system, communism. So that you can conform to this one, or the, the communism is just even an easier way to conform, because conforming to communism is, uh, was expected or you would die. And the rise and fall of communism was almost like the, lots of aspects of the book of Revelation as well. So we're not going to put a time limit on it. We're not going to see it as an overt thing because I see the inner world as opening into another dimension, which is, you know, the new Jerusalem kingdom, whatever, you know, uh, wh whatever, whatever he wants. But I, I'm led to say today that time never runs out. Nothing ever runs out. It goes on and on and on and on ad infinitum. You know, it's your clock will run out and what you do here with your soul is your free will, but that's about the only thing going on here it has to do with your soul. What you, whether you're going to give it away or you're going to keep intact or give it to God, you know, or give yourself to God or give yourself to the world. It just comes down to that. You give yourself away either way. You know, you die to yourself either way. And, um, you know, I'm thinking of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, give it away, give it away, give it away. They're now that famous rock song of the Red... I mean, you know, it's obvious that they're, they're talking about the world's way. You know, and um, the world is, is physical, carnal, and basically that's what I would call whoredom. In other words, I'll give you sex and you'll give me um, a bump up in the charts. I saw a new thing that uh they're doing where they have a uh a thing called raw talent and they have like fashion and music and different things and they hold performances like an on sunset strip at the key club in different places of these unknown artists to try to give them you know a showcase and a place to you know and you know the the, the artists themselves get their own people the key club's not that big so they get their own people to, to flood the key club. So there's, you know, so they make money off all that. So they put on all these concerts. It's like a pay to play thing. You know, you kind of pay to be in there with these people. And then they put on these concerts and create a community. Whereas your friends and whatever that know your act will come support you. And, and they, they're putting these on all over the world. But most of them I saw, I was on the website yesterday, just curious there's always a gimmick going on. It always, and it always comes out of LA. It always comes with entertainment. It always comes out of Hollywood. And so all these, all the talent there, there wasn't someone from Des Moines or someone from, you know, Canada or different places. All the artists there were from Hollywood, California. <laughs> all the fashion designers were from Hollywood, California. All the um, uh, movie people were from Hollywood, California. So it's a very... They're trying to branch out and get people to participate, but it's, you know, it's really Hollywood, California. And you read their stories and they're all trying to make it in the entertainment business, the fashion business, the photography business. Whatever. They kind of have a, uh, a whole group of these businesses. And there's a very talented people there and uh, really talented musicians. They're also on SoundCloud, as is, are all the labels and record companies on SoundCloud. And... Um, you know, they, the, the record companies, you can take a thing out of their playbook. They always put on, um, you know, their, their artists that have new albums, they always put the key cuts on there, but then have a link that you can go buy the tune. And I think that's probably a good way to go, you know, for the future. I mean, I think we should all be doing that. I think, you know, you deserve to have a little, 
trinket thrown in your hat for for having done a good job with a with a track that someone would want to download it and so they can they can pay 99 cents i mean it's not not too much to ask but that's what they do they put all all their different artists you know and these are famous people that you've heard of and their tracks are all available to hear on day one at soundcloud and um so then i followed some of these people on their soundcloud accounts and you know there's um and it's interesting. You would think that on, like, say, Interscope Records, Interscope Records is like one of the big record companies. You'd think that with Interscope Records, they would have, you know, 25,000 likes on some famous artist track. And in some cases, it's like 20, 30, 50. In some cases, it's 1.5 million. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's really new. So no one really knows. No one's really figured out how to use it. But just that everybody is admitting they're going to have to put their tracks out there to be heard. And we're going to do the same thing with SoundCloud, I'm sure. But there'll be links to, like I say, to iTunes or whatever to get it. But the point I'm trying to make is all these people have SoundCloud accounts, okay? They, they all, um, or in fashion photography, they also have photography accounts with various, you know, f I guess Flickr or different places, you know, as all the professional photographers, and film people have their own places where you can see a portion of their reel. And everyone is saying, look at me, look at me, look at me. If you, I sound like Laurie Anderson, the performance artist out of New York in circa 1980s. And, and everyone wants to be noticed and, every, and, and everything's good. Everyone's got a professional mix, you know, done by, you can tell some of them done by uh, really great people in LA and a good place to get a good mix and mastering and all that. And they all have uh, the clothes and they all have the makeup and they have the, the whole look and the tats and the, you know, the various things. And there's one for actors and there's, you know, for everybody. And they all have their resume and they all look really cool. They all look like they're already famous now. And, they're, and the key to all of these that I looked at is they're not going anywhere, even though they sing and dance and play and whatnot and have the video just as good as MTV, let's say. And they're dead in terms of any kind of, you know. So, so much for, and what's the point of that is the point of that is this whole paradigm of the digital realm of fame and fortune and, and all that is gone. Like the United States, that whole idea that, I mean, there may be an American Idol out there, but there certainly isn't any, it, it's even the record companies are scrambling to get people on SoundCloud and nobody knows anything anymore. And no one knows how to make it work. And no one knows how to make a dime. And all the, these very gifted people that deserve a shot, they're never going to get it. Because the record companies are not in a position to give shots anymore. They've got to work their libraries and, 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 and try to stay afloat, you know. It's just Armageddon. Which, of course, is perfect for me. See, that's where I come in. That's where I think I could make my great contribution to the realm of, of these the, the, the audio, spoken, uh, radio theater, which is coming, uh, and uh, music and anything audio. I definitely believe that I'm, that's just perfect for me. It's my time to get geared up, right? It's the opposite. <laughs> I don't care. See, I, I don't, there's nothing, I don't, I'm just going to put it out there anyway, whether they want it or not. You know, the Lord's pleased when we put stuff out that talks about the two, you know, with, with, that mocks that other way, that, that exposes things, you know, whether it be in music or this or that or talk or, and, 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 and drama. And, you know, we just going to have to put the pedal to the metal because, you know, you can't, you didn't expect the United States to exist, did you? After Washington, those morons built that architecture in D.C., you didn't expect it to last, Right. Did you? You think if I put my middle finger in God's face all day long, you think that he should just let me live forever? And now they worship a man, which I never thought I'd look. I never thought I'd see that. So it's, it, I know they worship Caesar. I know this is nothing new. I know they worship Pharaoh. This, and they worship him just like they worship Pharaoh. It's the same. There's an underneath realm we explained in the last audio, the real world, the real history, and the real lines of ownership of who owns what that the public can't see. 
And who's king? Who's a, a servant? Who's a lieutenant? Who's a, a captain? Who's a, uh, you know, people can't see that. So I'm, I pointed it out. And, it, and you know what? Let's say it's not what Daniel was talking about, but let's say it parallels exactly. You know, never, narcissism on steroids rewarded and rewarded and rewarded and rewarded and rewarded and rewarded against nature. Same personality as in Revelation 13. And you won't find anywhere... I mean, it, there isn't anything like this. This is the biggest prophetic event we've had in um, a thousand years or more or 5,000 years since Christ, let's say, since Jesus. But then before that, I mean, it's, it's significant. Even if it doesn't go anywhere, even if it just winds up coming back down to earth, which I just want to say that, yes, someone could turn off the switch and it could all of a sudden just d devolve into chaos and horror and he'll be blamed for all the evils of the world and then he'll, his reign will end and there'll be none to help him. But then some of the other events that were supposed to happen would not. I'm not looking at the events anymore in the book of Daniel to happen with this man. I am simply looking at the pat. I'm looking at the Rima that's coming off this, that's giving me an insight into this guy and what, what's, what's going on behind the scenes of sorcery, witchcraft, and all that regarding this situation. I think that's more where I can be helpful here. If it ends tomorrow or the next day or a year from now or five years from now, you know what? I don't focus on, I didn't focus on that last time. I've, I've, I'm, I'm moving away from, you know, I close in as close as I can to these events to unfold and things to look for. There'll be a war here and a war there. And, and that naturally Israel will be the key and Jerusalem will be the key. And when they goes to grab for Jerusalem, that's where he goes down. Okay. So you can watch for those events and I, and, and the Lord wants you to, it's not like you're looking for a sign to save you. You're, 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 you're fascinated with the things going on and you're, and it's putting you more close in contact with the Lord, knowing that that could be the only source of your information anyway, since the news media can't be trusted. And since no one even knows where the borders of these countries are anymore, right? Because the, the real borders are not the ones discussed. You know, the real law isn't the law, but you know, you know what I mean? There's a real world, then there's this surface thing. Okay. So I'm just saying that, um, you know, for the purpose of discussion, time goes on indefinitely. There is no um, kingdom on earth. It's a spiritual kingdom and everything is everything. It's cool. So now look at this situation. You're going to glean from the scripture. This, this, this thing is going to reflect on this. This, this going to widen. And for those of you who have to have an end of time, say, what, what do you like, 2019? I think that's probably... Not, you know, my own logic would tell me that, no, that's impossible. But, um, you know, anything's possible. Or, you know, uh, there'll be a lot of people losing their faith in 2020. But not me. Because I allow for time and space to be manipulated. And to, I allow myself not to understand it. Because time stems from eternity. You know, it's coming from a place that is a mystery. So I'm in a position where I can say, I don't think we understand time and the doppelganger nature of all this and how things keep folding in on themselves and how different events come and go. I think there's a, there's a confusion with time. And so I don't think that any man can know the time, you know, of say the Lord's return, the establishment of the forever kingdom. Suffice to say, Daniel prophesied it. He wasn't prophesying about some, you know, other life somewhere else. He's talking about on the earth, there'll be this kingdom and given to the saints, but it goes forever, which would go forever would be beyond the earth because the earth won't last forever. So it would be a different, obviously a different dimension, a different thing that goes on. And then in, in, in Daniel 12, he talks about, um, you know, the saints going on to be like the burning the stars forever and ever. And so they burn with their own light. And, you know, but that doesn't even matter what the quality, quantity, the, the way it is, whatever. Um. If Jesus is a God, then he's, you know, a spiritual being, you know, but, but that doesn't stop him from being able to appear as angels do in all, any kind of form he likes. So <laughs> you're never going to have a settlement of this argument 
of the inner and outer of, of, of the spiritual versus the, the physical. Suffice to say, God created the physical and I do expect a physical result. So to say never on the, forever, uh, on the establishment of the kingdom, the, the turning over of the evil so the earth would be subdued um, would have to be a whole change of human nature um, beyond where it is now. Because Christians right now, if you gave them power, they would just become dictators as well. So uh, nobody would be exempt and, and because nobody on the earth is sinless. No one is without blame, you know, and I, in, in that we are all together as one, you know, we're all equally fallen and we've made different choices as to how to deal with that. Some people have chosen the quick fix of going, do, going Satan's way. And then of course there is no Satan. Don't, don't, don't worry. I'm not going to, you know, go there and say Satan, Satan, Satan. No, there is no Satan. When you, when you choose that way, it's what we call the secular world. And that does work. And that has worked for a long time. And then, you know, and the Bible says, if you read it, truthfully, that there's a, you know, a consequence for that. And there's choosing the Lord, which means that you're going to have, you're going to be looked at as a fool, like a lamb who's a fool. When you could have been a wolf, you could have been a, you know, hyena, you could have been a, a, a tiger. Or something. But then there's the other thing about the lamb, that the lamb is really the lion of Judah. You know, the lamb is really a lion in the end. You know, there's that whole thing going on, which the world doesn't understand. But when it flips on them, so it's flipping on them every day. There are people every day who are going, oh, shit. I was wrong. Oh, my God. You know, there are people every day who it, who it flips on. And there are people every day who are, who are being, you know, tested with their faith. And there are people every day who are being blessed and they're going, oh, Lord, thank you. You've saved me. Oh, my gosh. What you've done is unbelievable. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. And other people are going, Lord, why have you forsaken me? Why have you just left me here? Why have you left me here to die, Lord? Why? Why have you left me and been so quiet and so distant? Why? When I'm going through my troubles and I feel really bad, uh, Lord, I want you to be there. Why aren't you there? Why can't I rely that you'll be there every time? And these are questions that can't be answered. They just can't be answered. It's only through faith that you're going to hang on another day and, 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 and just and, and do what you can to get through. You know, no, I don't look forward to these times. I, if you'll note, I was trying to stave this time that's coming now off. I tried to work for freedom and God-given liberty and God-given pursuit of happiness and, and, and freedom uh, for all. Uh, free markets, you know, to be able to pe for have people be able to thrive, to get, you know, to, 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 to see, you know, to, to kind of get the, what was good about America going to avert the, the disaster of what happened. But what happened was also magic, witchcraft, and hypnosis on a mass scale that people had ever seen before. And um, you just have to understand, it's... Uh, you weren't dealing. The election wasn't natural. I mean, you talk about a sign and a wonder. That was huge in the magical witchcraft realm. Huge. Completely supernatural, as was the storm. But, but people don't believe that. They, they don't believe it. So they're, they're still looking for a sign. And I, I don't know. What are you going to do? To the, um, the mind controllers who, who, who are misusing this kingdom within thing uh, to get control of people in their churches. Uh, you know, in other words, see no evil, do no heal, no, you know, the outside world, don't have to talk about any of that. Keep, quit looking for signs. Good. Wrong. Get away from those kind of, if they're, they're teaching you that, stop. It's natural for a human being to try to figure it out. And some are, called and led to prophesy to the rest of us about what's going on. Please don't quelch that, squelch that gift. But, you know, you're going to have people out there that say, ah, come on, Christians are just supposed to love each other and take care of each other. Stop with all this, you know, talk about the end of the world or not the end, of, you know, the gloom and do the big wars, all this horrible stuff. Stop with all that fear mongering. You're just trying to, you know, so, well, I'm not. I'm not fear mongering at all. And I have nothing to gain from it. I have no books of nothing I'm, you know, doing or selling or anything that uh, there's no, there's no, there's nothing in it for me. 
Just I'm led to, to say something and I pick up the microphone and I say it. And, you know, I, I wanted people to understand, you know, what happened. Maybe it's too early to do the history of the United States, you know, but I just wanted people to know what happened. And I, I, it's fascinating, the rise of this king. I, this is the kind of thing that the people that study the Bible and everything, they should be just fascinated with. People in the prophetic world, they should be just fascinated with that. And, and it, it probably will amount to nothing like every other situation, but you never know. So I just, you know, want to make sure that I've said that. I've said it how many different ways um, over the last couple of days and realized that, uh, you know, the disinfo agents out there, I'm not even trying to compete with them. For me, basically, I'll just take it on a daily basis. I have no idea when time ends and I have no idea when the forever kingdom ends. Other people have their theories of when tribulation started and they're going to end up being wrong. And so um, I just... I'm motivated by the fact that the world the way it is right now is not acceptable to me. And the reason it's the way it is is because people have signed on with Satan and, and, and it wouldn't be that way if they didn't. It's really very simple. So I try to educate them about it, but you know, just a lot of good that did. That, that was uh, the last 10 years. It's been a failure for me. Um, Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. I know prophetically my own thing that I am I am the end. You know, it's weird. I am have a signature of the end. There's like, I wouldn't be here unless this, it's always the end of something and the beginning of something else. And maybe what we're seeing right now is like the end of the United States and the beginning of something else. And it could just be on that level. Okay, not this big giant forever kingdom versus this horrible failure of man and all his wars and his strife and his, you know, injustice and, and all the corruption and all the stuff finally just quashed and overturned. Now, I got friends who say this is it. And you know who I'm talking about. And they say this is it. And I absolutely love hearing them talk about it in those terms. And I have, you know, I absolutely support them 100%. And I hope they're right. You see, without that hope, yes, I hope it goes to all that trauma right now because it means my Lord's coming. But the person that's already, I'm not going to look at that, saying those things, would not have a hope in all the horrors of the earth. They wouldn't see that beyond that would be you know, they have the faith to see through that, that there's going to be these horrors. And then beyond that, there'll be the forever kingdom of God established. They wouldn't see it that way. They would just probably be like everybody else, traumatized. Which is not keeping your lamp oil in your lamp. If you're traumatized, you, you, you did wrong. Faith in Jesus Simple faith that Jesus will guide. You know, and I've had people, I just have to say this. I've had people that whenever I put forward something, like say on Facebook, and there are people, they don't talk to me anymore because I, because I'm not going to let them just run their mouth. I'm going to get back in their face and then they're offended and they, they drop me. But um, no, I'm not going to back down. And, and it's, I have a right to, to post what I want to post there. Facebook is good for that. I have a right to post what I'm going to post because why? Because, um, you know, if I have something like, like some, some the, I've been talking about this Obama thing for a while now and I made posts about it and then people come in and say, no, that's not right. This is what's happening. And it's like, uh, you shouldn't say that. And I'm like, uh, excuse me, I will say what I want. And you, you know, being rude, uh, ought not to say what you're saying. Never met so many rude people as in this whole prophecy smack game. I mean, there, there's just so many rude people. It's just they're worse than the the Twitterers on the left in uh, 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 in the political game. You know, it's just a game for them. You know, who can be right? Ah, I was right. Ah, oh, I see. I got that one. 
<laughs> I call that. <laughs> well, I'm not going to bore you uh, anymore. But my warning goes forth. And yes, my thought about the Christian world is um, see no evil, hear no evil. A bunch of uh, dumb people that have in their churches have blinded. They're the blind, deaf, and dumb, basically. And, you know, the irony is it was supposed to be the opposite. The church was supposed to raise up a standard for Jesus and change things when they prayed, politically, this way, that way. But now they're told they can't even talk about politics so uh, or, or war or anything the government's doing, which is basically controlling everyone's lives right now. So therefore, they have been neutered, and I don't expect them to ever make a difference. They just zoom each other up with all their feel-good crap, and they, they've spent a ton of money, because I know, I know, I know a guy that who puts in all their, their recording equipment and, and mixers and PA systems. And it's amazing how much of your money that you give to the, they're spending on all this gear. I mean, I'm glad for that because a lot of friends I have work that keeps them in business, but they're going to have, they, they're, they're being rewarded for their complicity in the nightmare. So that's why I see a cross on a steeple. I go evil. Stay clear. Hmm. See a dirty liquor store. Good at school, as long as someone's not robbing it. <laughs> yeah. It could be that in my universe, you know, Jesus is is Satan. It, you know, in, in the sense of, no, 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 I freaked out, Trish. In the sense of the people and what they say they believe, you know, it's like the opposite's true, right? So their Jesus is really my Satan. And my Jesus is their Satan. They've called me a Satanist uh, over this the issues we talk about here. And they've said, you're a Satanist. So I'm the Satanist. And they're the Jesus. So someone's a Satanist. <laughs> so Jesus is somebody's Satan somewhere. But anyway, the truth never changes. The story never changes. It's just different aspects. Those of you who are offended by my having called you idiots and dolts and things, I apologize for that. I uh, am just frustrated, you know. I know that's not good behavior to call people idiots and dolts and airheads and things and not to call people just hopelessly blind, deaf and dumb and stupid and, and a waste of uh, uh, taking up a waste of geom geometric space. I know it's wrong to, to say all those things. I know it's wrong, but you know, you miss daily what's going on. You miss daily what's going on. Don't you want to see anything? Fire from heaven? We have to line up with what the truth really is, regardless of whether we like it or not. We have to line up with what, if, if there's a God, Yahweh, who created heaven and earth, and he's the guy whose person is in charge, we must bow down to him and him alone. We must bow down to Jesus Christ and him alone, which is the same thing. We must, whether we like the way things are going or not, we must suspend that and bow down if we know that's the truth. Yes, amen? We must. And I trust the Lord will guide you. If you do that, you won't have a problem and you won't be stupid and you won't be like aiding and abetting the enemy like the churches do. You will be on your own, but don't expect to be loved by the religious establishment or any guild who's based on corruption, which basically they all are. So don't expect to be invited in to the party if that happens to you. Expect that it's a lonely walk and you know whatever you do with your resources and your, you know, uh, it doesn't mean that you won't, you know, there's a lot of people who are, who are with Jesus who are, you know, probably celebrities or whatever that are, that are, they're not bowing down to the devil right now. They're just going to ride it out. 
And they've proven to themselves that they didn't have to bow down in order to have their fame or their fortune. And of course, see, when you really realize that, that the people that bow down the most are the poor third world countries bow down more than anyone else. <laughs> and they're always in poverty. And those who went with the principles of the Bible and Jesus Christ brought their standard of living up. It's just, it's they've, people have it backwards. Through fear, I suppose. Well, we've almost gone two hours. Hey, I love you. You frustrate me, but I love you. Pray for you. I, I, no, I don't have all the answers. I already, I already eviscerated my own. Look, I looked at it. I left myself opening. I'm looking, I'm saying, for our intents and purposes here, so you can just see this Barack Obama and see the kind of events coming upon the earth and see the way it's being divvied up. Just go ahead and suspend the idea of time and the forever kingdom and suspend that and just look at, look at it specifically and look at the scriptures that pertain personality-wise and to also to the times and the situation and then widen it out from there and see what happens that way. And you may, you know, if you get to a conclusion about time, Wonderful. I know people right now, they say, it's, it, this is it, it's over. The time, the hourglass has run out and the sands of time have fallen all the way through the hourglass and that's it. We're now in that kind of like strange eeriness before the smack 